Tulsi Gabbard went on Fox News to talk about Trump's assassination of General Soleimani um, of Iran, and this did not go too well for Fox. What do you make of the president's order to take out Soleimani? Uh, this was very clearly an act of war by this president without any kind of authorization or declaration of war from Congress, clearly violating uh, the Constitution. It further escalates this tit for tat that's going on and on and on will elicit a very serious response from Iran and pushing us mm -hmm. deeper and deeper into this quagmire. And it really begs the question, for what? What are we trying to accomplish? That, what, is the, what is the end state and the goal here? Uh, look, I've, I've said for a long time that going to war with Iran would make the war in Iraq uh, and, and even Afghanistan look like a picnic. It will be far more costly and devastating in American lives and in taxpayer dollars. And I don't believe the American people want to go to war with Iran. So when you look at their influence in Iran, when you look at Iran's, excuse me, in Syria, when you look at Iran's influence in uh, Lebanon, when you look at Iran's influence in Iraq, when you look at uh, their influence without the, uh, throughout the region and now uh, their pursuit covert and overt of a nuclear weapon, are you comfortable with us just pulling back and watching, just sitting in the stands and saying, pass the popcorn? Yeah, no, I think we need, to, we need to figure out why and how we've gotten to this point where Iran has a much greater level of influence and presence in Iraq and Syria, as you mentioned. Uh, it was because of uh, our, our regime change wars in Iraq and Libya and Syria that we've seen these countries turn, Iraq and Syria especially, turn more towards Iran for help and for assistance, strengthening their partnerships and allowing for Iran to gain far greater influence and presence uh, in many different respects in these countries. Mm -hmm. Really the question that we need to ask ourselves now is, we have men and women in harm's way today in these countries and what purpose are they serving? Originally it was that they needed to go and to, to prevent another uh, Al-Qaeda uh, insurgency and attack and threat to the United States to defeat these terrorists that attacked us on 9-11. That's the, that's the congressional authorization that our troops are there for. But really what we're seeing now is that's not actually the case. Al-Qaeda is stronger and it, 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 it is becoming more clear that our troops are really mm -hmm. there to fight against Iran once again a war that Congress has not authorized. There right. has been no declaration I don't of war think against I don't think Iran, we're and I think that's a really Iran. important point. I think point. that was a response to the rocketing it of our happened. base and then the, and then the hitting just happened, though. our embassy. Get off it, get off it, get off it, get off it. That's the sense I was getting. She just knows more about this than they do, and that's obvious. And they have, like, their stock talking points that they're ready to throw out there. And they throw them out there, and she just swats them down, and they're like, <laughs> Okay, so, um, in a world that made sense, the dynamic Tulsi's talking about there would be the dynamic that we embrace. We would go, oh, hold on now. We have a common enemy. Our common enemy is ISIS, and Al-Qaeda, and the jihadists. So... Why wouldn't we have some sort of strategic alliance with Iran? Now, I'm not saying you hold hands and sing Kumbaya. I'm not saying, you know, all of a sudden you iron out the details of like a, a, a trade deal that mutually benefits both countries and, you know, solidifies the, the regime that they have there. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, in a world that makes sense, the person who would kill you in a second is the person who's the number one priority. That's ISIS. That's Al-Qaeda. Iran is not that. We can get Iran. We have gotten along with Iran in the past. So, yes, I would work with them. No doubt about it. And, by the way, to, you know, in a small way, that's what was happening for a while. When it was clear that ISIS was the overarching threat, we work with the Kurds, we work with the Shia militias, we work with Iran, and we said, we're going to, we have to defeat ISIS. But in typical U.S. fashion, you know, we, we flipped immediately after. And ISIS, by the way, and jihadists, they're still there, they're still a thing. We could have used our alliance on that front to at least, 
iron out tensions, but the U.S. is the aggressor, and we decided, no, we're going to bomb you. That's what we're going to do. And so, um, I like how she said very simply, this was an act of war. Guys, I'm not kidding when I say people are attempting to disagree with that. I want you to imagine how... How silly you have to be as a person to believe that. The assassination of a foreign leader, a foreign general. If somebody did that, did that to us, would these people ever say, no, it's not an act of war. Don't be silly. Of course they think it's an act of war. The same rules and definitions apply to us, guys. That's the way the world works. Everybody in the world sees this as, oh, U.S. aggression, an act of war, obviously. So you don't get to tap dance your way out of that one. And listen, man, you know, I feel compelled every time we discuss this to bring up the, uh, the facts here. And the facts are, he was not an imminent threat against us. That's a nonsense line with zero evidence for it. Just like they lied about Saddam, they're lying about this. This was a guy who just defeated ISIS. This was a guy who was literally on a peace mission when he was killed. And, um... Trump took this line, now they're going to respond, and then Trump will unleash the hounds and we'll be even deeper in there. And their goal is regime change, it's always been, that's why the neocons are so excited and so happy, they're, it looks like we're working on finally giving them that wish, um, and it's, it's terrible. In a world that made sense, every single news segment on the situation in Iran today would have to bring up the history of Iran and the US. And they would have to point out the objective fact that we are a bully. That's what we are. We're a bully in the region. We o we've overthrown their government in the past for oil. We want them to be our puppet state again. And that's effectively what this boils down to. But people will not give you that history and that context, which tells you very simply that they're not good at their jobs.